Um, so hi, I'm here today to talk about the Open Source Way, which is a guide for community management best practices. Um, and I'll you know, go into what all that means. And uh, my name is Karsten, and I'm a uh, community architect on the Red Hat's Open Source Program Office. And that's enough about that. If you want to know more about that stuff, come talk to me later. Um, I'll also be in the Expo Hall all day tomorrow, as long as it's open. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, what this thing is. Oh, how interesting, the render to, this is interesting. I may have to abandon this and go, I didn't look at my ODP and it didn't like the font. You know, I'm going to pause and I'm going to, and I'm going to switch over to the PDF and that way you can actually see all the stuff that's on the slides. And um, I will just have to uh, mutter along somehow. No, 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 no. Oh, how do I do this thing where I page down? What's presentation mode? Actually, does this actually have a present mode? What's this? Slide pane. No? Oh, I can turn the slide pane off. Oh, is there a hamburger menu over here? And I can't read sideways. Can do you see anything that says? Yeah, present a slide show. I might right there. Ta da! Thank you everybody. Good audience participation. Um, you are now now contributors to this talk. I appreciate that. Um, that's the whole point. So let's go on from there. Um, and yeah, I may have to occasionally glance over my, I know all this stuff, but I might glance over to look at it every once in a while. I promise I won't read from my slides. Um, so today I want to talk about what this thing is, what this guide is, what the vision for it is, the intention, um, you know, kind of going from here. Uh, and part of that is to talk about how we got here, what's the history of it, because that, that kind of tells the story and also a sort of a, a tale of what happens in open source where ideas come along and they're, you know, it's, there's, it's the right time for them, but maybe not the perfect time for them. Uh, and so the present, where we are today, what's going on right now, um, and, and one of the hints I'll tell you is I'd intended that we would have a little, when I submitted this talk, our schedule was that we were going to have a little bit more released by now. So, you know, so I'll talk about where we are today. And then what's next? What's coming? Um, who's doing what? Uh, when those things are happening? Sure I'm on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So here's the vision, and I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to read this because I wrote this this morning to, because I realized we didn't really have a really good one for it. So uh, our goal is to create a community management best practices guide for open source practitioners. And that doesn't just mean community managers. It means anybody who's practicing open source in any way, right? And written by and from the experience of those same practitioners. So any kind of community practitioner, not just open source, might have something to contribute or to learn from this. Uh, and in the process, foster a community of practice that will maintain and grow the guide. So community of practice is this thing where people who are interested in learning how to do something better get together as a community and learn amongst themselves how to do things better. Um, so this kind of matches into this idea pretty well. So let me get into the quick history. So okay, so that's the overall vision of what we're trying to do, right? And, and, and as I go along, I'll, sh I'll do some outline, I'll show you what's actually gonna be in the guide, what's going on, where we are, and so forth. And that'll help kind of fill in that vision to show you what we really got. Um, so, so about um, 10, 11, 12 years ago, well, I guess it's, <laughs> it's 2020 now, 11, 12 years ago, uh, I worked with a number of colleagues at, at Red Hat and the community architecture team, Greg DeConensberg, Max Spivak, Mel Chua, uh, Sebastian DeZales, um, all, all, all of our interns, yeah, um, Ileana Weller. We all uh, collaborated on some ideas around a book we wanted to do because we had this experience of constantly answering the same questions for people over and over again. We thought, if we could answer this for Red Hatters in one document, how much easier our life would be. And the moment we started to outline it, we realized that this thing had to be, uh, it, basically if, if it's gonna purport to give best practices for how to do an open source community, one of those best practices would be don't write a secret book by a small group of people and keep it inside your company, right? It would be do this as an upstream, something like you know this whole project. So, so every one of those questions sort of answered themselves right away and we realized we needed to created a project where this all kind of came from, and then Red Hat would put all this there, and ideally we would collaborate with other people outside the company to improve what was there, and we would all learn from it. So we did the first version of the book, and it was intentionally incomplete. I uh, had a lot of here come in, work in this area sort of things, and I did a little work for about a year to publicize it and get interest, and people were using it, um, but we didn't really get a, a very large contributor base. I had some good con comments and, and things that came in, but it didn't really get very far, and then um, priorities shifted and things moved on from there. And that was okay because the book was serving the purpose it needed to at the time, and it helped for a while. It didn't solve all the problems. Um, 
But in, that, in the time since then, there's been an evolution, I'll say, in open source development in terms of people understanding what it is and why, and that you want to do it. And, and also, there's a lot of stuff out there about how to do it, but this concept, this idea of why, like why you do something has always been missing. And then obviously, there's no book out there that's written by, collaboratively by open source practitioners about how to do open source, I think. I think I can still make that claim. There is now, though. No, that's what we're working on. Um, is that what I was expecting to see next? Yeah, so why something is a best practice good. I just wanted to make sure I said that part. That was, that was important to me. Um, so in general, this is a top level outline of what the sections of the book are going to be, uh, or, or are right now. We're starting to get, there's some content coming in here. So we're going to have sections. The sections will have chapters. Um, everybody who writes, the book, writes in the book will work on a chapter or one or more chapters, um, either by themselves or collaboratively with a few other people. Uh, we have, some of those chapters are blank. Some of the ones, ideas we have are blank. Some of them have got some starter material pulled from other sources. So there's things to work with. Um, and so, those, so these are the sections that all those chapters would fit in. Um, and um, let's see. So the first one, the Community 101, or the introduction, is the basic idea of what an com open source community is, or what's community mean in an open source context. It's probably the better way to say that. And, and then also an important one, why you would have community, um, and to look at those situations where maybe you, uh, you don't need to have a community, and that's okay. You know, you, and not every piece of code out there needs a community around it, right? Um, and similarly, something that came up in our workshop yesterday is this is, an, this is also a good location to have a quick start. Hey, you, you two, you've got two or three friends, you're working on a project, you want to make sure that you're starting things off right so that you don't um, create community social debt going down the road besides technical debt. So here's a quick start. And so that's something we're going to add in that came out of the discussions in the workshop yesterday. And then from there we get into this area that I think really um, demonstrates the bias of the community teams at Red Hat, uh, w what we see as the way to, uh, to grow an open source software project, that we want to have a good contributor base and good user base, is by focusing on making something that people want and people will use and ha they have a good user experience. And, and making sure that when anybody from that larger, that growing user group comes to look at your project, they are able to learn things about it real quickly. If they're the kind of person who likes to participate, maybe uh, go on a web forum and ask and answer questions, maybe they like to come to a conference and give a talk or just talk to people in the hallway about how much they like a particular piece of software and so forth, then, then those participants have got everything they need right there. They don't even have to ask questions or find something. They can find those pieces. And, and, and as those kind of people grow and become contributors, the idea being that contributors don't just parachute out of the sky, but there's somebody who generally you cultivate them from within the community or, or people come along. And, and then how do, you, you know, how do you grow those contributors on uh, what's going on inside there? Um, and then this community manager self-care is, a, is a, a, sec a new section that came out of a birds of a feather session we had at FOSDEM last month. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the participants, audience members, asked about this, and, and it became, again, immediately self-evident in that moment that it was an entirely new section that was going to need multiple chapters um, within it. Um, and again, something that really, it, it speaks to the community of practice, it speaks to taking care of ourselves, it speaks to how um, um, the kinds of things that, um, what's the old adage about the carpenter's roof leaks kind of thing, you know, that, that, that we always forget to take care of ourselves. And that if this is going to include best practices, it has to include taking care of ourselves. Um, and then beyond that, we, we, uh, another section that at least our team knows that we, we would need in there is measuring success. You know, we have a kind of a corporate role in seeing that stuff, and there's a lot of people care about that sort of thing, so there's a pretty a good area. I think a lot of work is going to go in there that will be new, um, helping gather together uh, all the different ways and techniques that are out there and best practices around that. And then we have this catch-all at the end, avoiding pitfalls and learning from mistakes. Um, and this is a little bit of a, by catch-all, I mean, this is stuff that maybe the stories and the bits that didn't fit anywhere else, they didn't quite make the cut, but they're really good ones to have. And we just want to make sure that they're in here, um, these kind of common things that come through. Um, so yeah, let me just, oh, just, you know, expand upon this a little bit. I said some of this, but I'll just go through it. So these, you know, what the sections are going to look like um, and the different chapters within it. Um, this quick start checklist, that's a new thing. Um, Tracking users, kind what participants want, how they can help, and so you know these kind of the, and these are these are chapters that we envision being in there, but this doesn't mean this is the only chapter that will be in a section. Somebody could come along and say, you know what you're missing is this, and say, great, do you want to write that chapter? And now we've got a new one. Um, and in addition, 
we're, we're, we're realizing that people might want to make their own remix of this. And so everything in our, in our rep repository is designed and labeled so that you can, uh, I can show it to you in a few minutes, but basically the idea is that we don't, the tooling's not there, but the idea is that you could go through and cherry pick and decide what you wanted in your own book. Maybe you wanted something that was focused on people who were doing hard development or on people who were trying to market um, with community in mind. And so you would maybe just pull out all the stuff that didn't matter to them and build a version that, that did. Um, and then also, I think I can mention this as, as well. It's a good time to mention as well. When, within each one of these chapters, the idea would be that, that, the, that the overarching content would be applicable to kind of any free culture situation a little bit. I mean, definitely focused on open source software, but in a way that can be uh, applicable to other things. And then specific examples, those um, uh, stories that tell why people do things, uh, those can be swapped around depending on what um, target or what audience you've got. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a little broader vision. We're, we're, our 2.0 version is we want a whole pass of the book that's complete. And then some of these things are just additional ideas that, that will get caught in there. And yeah, let me expand out a little bit on what we, you know, the idea of growing contributors. Um, an important one is being able to identify what a contribution is, the kind of thing that we want to, you'd want to have on the front of an open source project that says, hey, documentation is a real contribution. Hey, marketing is a real contribution. Please come apply your skills here. Um, and then just other things about how, you know, getting a project organized and, and uh, doing onboarding. So that came out of a conversation yesterday. Um, I had somebody come up who, who had, um, she has experience in, in community organizing, but not in, um, but her community organizing is around it. So, so, there, so she had this like, I don't know if I fit in here or not. And it sure would be nice to have something that tells me I fit in to this project right here. And I was like, yeah, because of course I would, again, I would tell somebody else that advice for their project, make sure that people know. And so, so while she was here yesterday, we, um, we issued a, uh, we, she opened a new issue against the README file to, so that we will go and include this. So when you come to the project as it is right now, it will talk about if you have any kind of experience that you're worried about applying come in. We'll help you figure out how to apply it. Um, and then other things that are important, legal and governance, community roles. Um, I forget what migrating code is, but it's one of those things that is important to somebody. So, you know, we've got a chapter for it. I'm um, just being honest. I forget where that one came from. So yeah, here's the community manager self-care, um, that new section. Uh, finding healthy communities and developing a metrics plan. That's sort of the way that our team has looked around when we're, when we're trying to measure what's going on in the community is to say, have an idea of what, what healthy means versus not healthy in that context. And then what's the, wh how, how are we going to measure? You know, with a human, you've got body temperature and you've got, you know, are your cheeks flushed? Are you coughing or anything like that with, uh, you know, what's the equivalent with a community, right? Um, yeah, and like I said, homo tell the extra stories. And what that means is when, that, when I was describing that kind of overarching way a chapter might be built where you've got the story at the end, that, that why example, this is where all those extra why examples get drop into. And it, maybe it becomes a place you can cherry pick from when you're doing a custom chapter. We'll have to see if that, that works. And then, and then proof and references, like anything we've got that's sort of a source material that we want to be able to point to so that we're not um, duplicating things in and, um, and what the community recommends as, as best references to use. Okay, let me take a breath. Uh, I said a lot of stuff. Is there any questions at this point in time? Or, um, I can just keep flowing. Okay, cool. So let's give you an idea of what's going. I mean, so that's what the book is. And, and when the book's ready, you'll be able to pick it up and you can use it for that. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, whatever purpose, whatever place that you might want to, whether it's so you can uh, practice for yourself how to, uh, how to have a... Uh, um, how to improve or look for ways to improve your open source community, um, or you can, you know, something you can show to other people for, for, for like here, this is, the book says we need to have a, this kind of thing. We need to have, you know, we need to be transparent or something, and here's why, and it's got all the pieces there for that. So, uh, so where we are right now in the present is we have, um, we have a Git-based workflow, and we've, we have, we've been focused in the last several weeks on having everything set up so that when this workshop happened yesterday, if somebody wanted to sit down and author content, we would be able to drop them the workflow and get them going. So we have all that in place, so we're basically ready to, for people to start saying, great, I'd like to work on the metrics chapter. Hey, I want to work on this self-care chapter. Um, and, w and what we're doing is we're writing an ASCII doc, which is a markup language. Um, and part of the reason for ASCII, well, there's some, you know, some back-end reasons. We're, we're, we're trying to make simple, straightforward decisions about tooling. 
uh, in, for the 2.0 release. And the goal there, and, and at that point in time, well, we, everything is up in the air. We can look again and see what worked and what didn't. And do we want to stay on a GitHub-based workflow? Do we want to move somewhere else? Um, so this is essentially, essentially, again, this is us practicing our own advice. You know, if as an open source project, don't self, get yourself spun around the axle uh, trying to get everything perfect right from the beginning. Sometimes you just need to get started with something that's good enough and then keep iterating. And just make sure you write down what you don't think is good enough so that you have, can not forget and fix it. Um, and, and, and one of the important things for us using GitHub right now is that is where a lot of the people that we are interested in getting the first round of contributors for. There are way more contributors in places not than GitHub, but it's, it's a clear, like, pretty large pool of people who are open source practitioners who are familiar with the pull request process. And, um, and honestly, it's almost easier to do than it would be to run like a Wikipedia, you know, even with a little edit button. We don't, we can't, you know, the ability to do the reviews and, and wrap all the, keep the discussions around a piece of content wrapped with it is really nice in, in, in Git. Um, yeah, so exactly. So the discussions will stay with the content and the idea is if you're familiar with how GitHub works or that kind of process works, we have an issue for every chapter. And, that, and so all the discussions about the chapter happen in that issue. They can be assigned to people. Um, it moves through. Do I have my picture? Yes. Okay, it moves through a workflow. That is a pretty terrible picture. I can actually flip over to the browser to take a look at this in a moment. Um, and I'll do that while, we're, while I'm talking. And come back over here, little mouse. Um, go over to, I'm going to do this in front of me because then I'm not trying to do it over my shoulder while I'm talking to you all. Let me drag it into place. Okay, here we go. Okay. This, the point I'm doing, the reason I'm doing this is because unlike the, um, the slide, I can actually, um, you know, blow this up a little bit so you can see from out there. Um, so we've got over here, here's a chapter on community fundamentals. It's an issue. Um, if you, if I click on it, uh, it'll open up the details over here on the side. So it's a nice little swim lane based as an article, as we work, as a card comes, it's going to get moved from the to be assigned to the assigned through drafting, review, and editing phases. So essentially, we're, we have set up a publishing workflow, just like you would with articles in a magazine or chapters in a book. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of our teammates, one of the contributors to the project, um, Brian Berenshausen, has worked on uh, Red Hat's open organization books. And they used this workflow for uh, deciding the outline of every one of the books in collaboration with the community of, of writers. And we're taking this a, next, a step further. We're not just doing the outline. We're doing all the content authoring in here as well because it's an environment that's comfortable for the contributor base that we want. And let's see, can I just tip over? Yes, okay. Um, yeah, so the nice thing about that is when, when, when a, a piece of content gets all the way to the end and it's actually merged into a, an editor, we'll do the final merging, which I'm going to do, it'll actually, um, it, it, it'll close the issue and it does all kinds of nice little project management stuff to make our lives um, easier, particularly when we're dealing with, I haven't done the count, but we've probably got 24 or 30 different chapters that we're looking at being possibly right now just for the 2.0 version. Um, and, you know, and maybe one or two authors per chapter and just a lot of stuff to move through. Um, so in terms of collaboration, we're trying to keep it simple and focused and not all over the place. We do not have a synchronous, we don't have a chat channel yet. We haven't decided where direction, and we've been using uh, our team Google Chat for now, but we obviously need to, to break out beyond that. But the key is um, asynchronous communication. So most of our, our meta discussions are happening on the forum mailing list, which is at list.theopensourceway.org. And you, it, uh, the list has a, a web interface or mail email interface, depending on what you prefer to interact with it. Um, and that's just the meta discussions. If we, you know, if we'll, that's a place to talk about which, how many, which chapters we might want or will a series of chapters make the cut, like that kind of thing, um, from a bigger perspective and bigger vision discussions. Uh, but like I said before, the, con the discussions around each individual chapter is going to happen within the issue so, and within um, commit comments. So it all stays with that chunk of content. Um, and we're also begun hoping, we've been in running open weekly video um, sessions where our team just has a stand up and we, we carved out a section of a half hour time that we're all there and we're going to get on video and make it open and just started doing it. It's, it's imperfect so far, but um, the idea is anybody will be able to join or watch the live stream and it's recorded and, and it's another place for us to be able to, you know, not just be transparent, but to show the process by which everything is happening, um, which we know is key to, um, to attracting contributors. 
Uh, so in terms of who is doing what right now, um, there's me, I'm Karsten, and, and I'm the project lead, and I'll talk about what that means in a moment. Um, uh, Brian Prophet is a lead editor. You, some of you may be familiar with Brian from his work in tech journalism or as a community manager for, um, I don't know, OpenSUSE, what else did he do? A bunch of things. And uh, Brian's a very experienced uh, writer and editor, and <clears throat> he knows how to say no when I have a hard time saying no. So one of the reasons I didn't want me to be the editor was because I didn't, I didn't have to face that problem. Um, and Brian's very good at that. Um, so Sean McCants, who is Sean's here in the audience, so you want to wave your hand, is our, is our lead writer. Right here behind you. And uh, the lead writer, the writer role is to work with writers while content's being authored before it goes into review. Um, there's a number of different good reasons for that. Sometimes an author might be, might just really need that comfortable back and forth without the sort of the way that an ed editor kind of, even when an editor's trying to collaborate with you, it kind of feels like they're telling you, it's like a teacher, you really should choose this answer, don't you think? You know, it sort of feels like a little heavier handed where a, a, another writer is a collaborative opportunity and we want to foster collaboration amongst everybody. So that's where that idea kind of, kind of came from and, um, you know, Sean has a strong background in writing from the documentation and from the GNOME project. So, so he's collaborated with a lot of people and you know, that's what we were looking for that. Um, and then the editing team right now um, is the three of us and anybody else who wants to, to come in. Um, mostly this is, this is going to be, ideally the narrative flow and things like that will be fit, primarily done by the time the editors are reviewing. The writers will have all found a way to make the things, the stories flow and sound good together. Um, so a lot of it will be, I think, copy editing and, and just having a broader picture of things. But, you know, if you're editing nerd, it's a good chance to do things. And then the writing team right now, it's, you know, again, it's the four of us, um, Brian, Brian, Sean, and myself. Uh, but we've had a few other people. We're actually going to have to start adding names of folks who've contributed some stuff so far and, um, you know, and keep going from there. Um, but, yeah, everybody's welcome to come in and contribute. Um, and so basically, yeah, I mean, I, I pointed out with the workflow, but I, you know, good little talk through exactly the details of what happens from, hey, I want to do something to, hey, it's published. Um, so the basic idea is, you, it, the basic effect is to either go into the GitHub issue and put a note and say, I'd love to work on this, who else is interested, assign it to me. Um, or you can come into the mailing list and discuss and say, I've seen these two chapters, I'm having some ideas around it. So that's a good way to start the conversation about what you want to do if it's you know, not so sure. So those are the two places to really go and, and put a flag and say, I'd like to work on this. Um, and then the working on the content will happen, um, will happen in Git, um, in, in ASCII doc, um, collaborating with other writers and the lead writer, you know, as I described, and that kind of back and forth to, to get something that really is um, you know, ready for review. Uh, when, the, when, the, when the writer feels that it is, uh, the content is ready, you know, the one who's actually got their name on, the byline on the chapter, that person makes a pull request. Um, it's just a little bit of... Um, uh, just kind of auditing the accountability, I guess, you know, just we want to be really clear who, who said what and did what and, and that kind of thing. I just feel like it's pretty, um, it's, a, it's a best practice if you're able to do it. It's why we use version control, um, why we have git blame. And
as long as enough people come along to do the writing. Um, so, that's, so that's something we'll, start, we'll be discussing on the mailing list, because it's a nice meta discussion. Um, and I just wanted to touch upon project governance. I said before, you know, that I'm, you know, I described, you know, I'm the project lead. We got the editors. We got this whole kind of thing of how we're going to shift to. Our vision is like this is how we want to get the two dollar book out and grow a community of of, of collaborators around it. Um, but but also we advise that you don't you don't have the same project leadership and you keep succession succession planning in mind and that a community should own its own governance, should decide how it wants to be, ultimately. And we can't decide right now for a community of people who, don't, who exist but haven't come together yet. So this is what, what you know, the, the plan that we put forward is that for, basically this, this whole thing covers through the book, right? So from the, we figure it's going to take us about six months to get the book to the published state. You know, that's what a little squiggle is. It's about six months. And during that time, I'm just going to take kind of like a strong leadership approach. Ultimately, I'll just make decisions as they need to happen just to keep things moving forward um, and deferring to everybody else when we need it and just following that process. And in that process, somewhere along the way, about, about halfway through, as a community is developing, we'll start to discuss what governance we actually want, how we want to run things going forward. And there's a lot of different models, a lot of different ideas. We'll, we'll have a chance to hash all those out on that meta discussion mailing list. And then we'll get it in place so we have it and it's ready to be adopted. And then once one of the celebratory points of the 2.0 releases, we're going to adopt a new governance. And I have no idea what it'll look like at that point. Um, you know, it, maybe some of the same people are still doing the same kinds of things, but it's going to be because it's uh, been decided and not because Daddy Shadow Man said this is the way the project is structured and go forth into the universe. Um, Daddy Shadow Man is a Red Hat reference for those of you who don't know that one. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh well. Look at that. Perfect. Just under the half hour mark. Um, uh, yeah. So let me bring it to the questions. Uh, these are, and well, I'll point really quick. These are the, the contributor mailing list, which is where all the discussions are happening. That meta discussions. Um, here's the full list link. Um, List.theopensource.org is will take you there basically. And um, all of these links are in the README as well. You can this this um, whole presentation is in the GitHub repo. You know, try to do some circularity of stuff in there. And, and like I said, this uh, actually, I, I, just let me pop over and show you. I'm sorry. I'm such a fan of the, um, of the, oh, come on. Be nice to me. Right here. This is actually part of, yeah. So this is the HyperKitty interface for Mailman 3. And it gives you a full web form view into a mailing list. So um, half of my, half of my uh, things I author are coming to this interface and just clicking go and starting to thread and doing it because, I don't want to go to my email. And other times I'm happy to do it from email. Um, so yeah, so this is a great place to ask questions. And of course you can find me in those places at iquay.org and uh, you know, uh, Twitter is a good place to uh, start conversations that we want to have in public that haven't uh, moved into this space. <sighs> okay, so there go. Any questions or, or things or questions disguised as comments or anything? Comments disguised as questions? Yeah. So I guess what, um no, that's a good question. What inspired the reboot? Um, I think there's a couple of things, and, and one of them was a, a little bit of an idea, not kind of ahead of its time, but the big vision was a little bit ahead of its time, in in that um, at the time, though, I you know, well, yeah. So I think that was part of it. So if, if we did, because what, because what I really mean by that is. Uh, we would do something like this right now anyway if we didn't have a, a 1.0 to source from. We wouldn't be rebooting, we'd be starting from scratch. So that's the real answer is because as our open source program office, so the, the, the medium answer on this stuff is that Red Hat's traditionally done a lot, had all of its um, smarts about how to do open source communities at the edges. You trusted the developers in the projects to know what to do. Sometimes that worked well, sometimes that didn't work well. Projects that had more importance, we would, or higher strategic value to the company like Fedora, we would have more people in there doing community management functions. But a lot of the expertise really was at the edges. So uh, it was only about eight years ago, actually this January, that the open source program office was formed under a slightly different name. And, and that was the first time we had a centralized group of people who cared about making our projects wildly successful. And every year since then, I have gone to my management and said, is this the year that we're ready to restart the book again? Because, because again, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those blindingly obvious, like we're always redoing, we're answering the same questions, we're going to do the same things. And, and for, for me, it was just basically having patience to wait until everyone said, yeah, we are really ready to, we have so much knowledge going on, so many things, and we're going through constantly to grab things and point to people, and it doesn't make sense for us to have it in a little walled garden. And so we want to kind of, you know, 
kind of reboot this. And so having, having kept it alive and the idea of it alive along the way really did help, though, because I think if we didn't do that, I think we would be starting a leg farther down for sure. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I don't think I answered that much detail when you weren't here, so you didn't miss that. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, cool. And that was, and that was my thanks. It's me. Everything is everything CC by SA. There's my link to this thing down below. That's me. Can be that right at com. And I think that was it, right? Oh no, I went down. Boop. Oh, thank you. Thank you from right out. But that's it. Okay. Thanks everybody.